so many dog diets out there, kibble for small and large breeds, vegetarian, raw, so many yummy treats to choose from. No wonder choosing the right food can seem like such a hairy decision. To help you through this, we rounded up dog owners in the pet side community who were so hungry for help that they were willing to take a bite of dog food in exchange for a bite of expert information. Pet side viewers, sit. You're in for a real treat. So, Serena, I hear you have a question about little Stewie here. Yes, I was just curious if a small dog like this needs size specific food. That's a really good question because I'm not like a huge girl, but I can down like triple, super large, non fat mochaccino. Wendy Nan Rees, pet lifestyle advisor and author of the Natural Pet Food Cookbook, says size specific food has a lot to do with the size of the kibble. Just as you wouldn't give your toddler a giant piece of steak, a Yorkie can't chew a giant piece of kibble. LA veterinarian Kevin Schlanger adds that size-specific foods are also formulated to prevent certain diseases. For example, a formula for small breeds who are prone to developing skin issues usually contains omega-3 and 6 fatty acids, ingredients that promote healthy skin. All right, ready? Mmm, tastes just like candy. Oh, well here, do you want another one? Okay, let's get some more. No, thanks. One's good enough. Come on, it's candy. I mean, you can't have enough candy. No. I'm just trying to figure out which treats to give them. Like if there's a balance between nutrition and just overall their food and like the consumption of treats. So what are you willing to do for this treat? Oh, wow. Have you been a good girl? Wendy says steer clear of treats with artificial ingredients and flavors. She also warns that any treat can have too many calories if your dog is overweight. For a low-cal, micro-sized treat, she suggests a Cheerio. Veterinarian Brigitte Anconi favors healthy treats, such as a piece of banana or melon or high-protein treats, like freeze-dried chicken, beef, or liver. For teeth, Dr. Kevin suggests looking for treats that contain fluoride. And as a rule of thumb, gooier treats are worse for plaque and tartar than harder consistency treats. Wow. You're right, people can eat it. I just need one more. It's very good, actually. Um, I like it. I do. Uh-oh. You liked this? We've been looking at vegetarian diets for dogs, and I want to know, doing that they are canine species, what is a vegetarian diet consist of, and how would that apply for a dog's health? Potatoes have eyes. Does that mean this is vegetarian? Wendy is quick to point out that dogs in the wild are not vegetarians. In fact, the only vegetables they would ever eat are the ones inside the stomachs of the animals they kill for dinner. But Dr. Kevin says putting your dog in a vegetarian diet is a personal preference and can be healthful. However, vegetarian dog food needs to have all the nutrients your dog would usually get from his meat food. So make sure the food has the amount of calories your dog needs, as vegetable proteins have fewer calories than meat proteins. And ask your vet to check the label for essential amino acids and adequate calcium, since calcium is usually derived from bone. Vegetarian wet dog food, and it kind of looks like stew. It looks like corned beef. It tastes like carrots. Well, that's good. I'd eat that. <laughs> she got it on her face. Would you go vegetarian? Well, that sure was a lot of food for thought. Or should I say thought for food? <laughs> Either way, now that you've filled up on expert advice, choosing the right food for your dog should be a snap. Hmm, now what do I want for dinner? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Join us next time to find out what's new on the pet side.